Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Marissa and you're watching Life After the Fontan. But today is a special occasion, it's Heart Week. So this is my special video for Heart Week 2021. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some myths and facts of CHD. I figured it would be the perfect video to share during Heart Week. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on your notification bell if you'd like to be one of the first to watch my upcoming videos, and also look out for me on Instagram. I've decided to make a page on another platform coinciding with this channel. So it will also be titled Life After the Fontan. Um, right here's the, the name that you can search for. So the first fact that I would like to share is that congenital heart defects are the number one most common birth defect. Fact number two is that they impact every one in 100 babies born, which equates to 40,000 babies per year in the United States. Think about that number worldwide. Fact number three is that it's actually 60 times more prevalent than childhood cancer. So all forms of childhood cancer combined. The first myth I'm sharing is that all congenital heart defect babies are born blue, right? Wrong. There are actually two types of congenital heart defects. There are cyanotic and there are acyanotic congenital heart defects, one of which, cyanotic, uh, impacts their pulmonary blood, causing the CHD ear to look blue. However, an acyanotic defect is one in which does not impact the pulmonary circulation, so they'll usually come out looking pink. Fact number four, congenital heart defects can be detected as early as 12 weeks gestation, meaning a mom can be about three months pregnant when they may be able to find that congenital heart defect. Now, of course, they, not all are prenatally diagnosed, but they can possibly be found as early as 12 weeks. When you're going to an appointment for some type of fetal imaging, it's important to ask if you can see all four chambers, if the walls are intact between the chambers, if the valves look good, if the great arteries are crisscrossed, things like that. Myth number two, you can develop congenital heart defects after being born. This is also incorrect. Congenital heart defects are structural malformations of the heart that occur in utero. They are not something that can develop or form or be acquired after being born. They may be diagnosed after birth, either days, weeks, months, or years, even into adulthood sometimes, but they have been there since birth. They can't just show up one day. Myth number three, all congenital heart defects are hereditary. This is also incorrect, and it, actually it's pretty interesting. They don't really know the cause to most congenital heart defects. They say that only about 15 to 20 percent of congenital heart defects are related to known genetic or hereditary conditions. Fact number five, congenital heart defect is actually three times more likely if the mother herself already does have a congenital heart defect. So not necessarily that it is hereditary, but hey, we just talked about it. It can be. Myth number four, and I've been asked this before, congenital heart defects are contagious. Incorrect. That is not at all true. Um, I'm glad it's not true. I wouldn't be able to hug someone without giving them a hole in their heart, I suppose. But no, congenital heart defects are not contagious. It's not like the flu or an infectious disease. Again, it's a structural malformation. Fact number six, congenital heart defects impact the entire body, not just your heart. This one may honestly be the most important to me because so many times people hear I have a congenital heart defect and they don't understand that this is something that impacts every area of my life and body, honestly. It impacts my lungs, it impacts my liver, it impacts my immune system. It, it can impact your reproductive system, it can impact your mental health, it, it can impact so much, your nutritional status, so many things, your neurocognitive development. There are so many different things that congenital heart defects impact other than just the heart. So really, congenital heart defects are the structural malformation. Congenital heart disease is the overall disease process, really, of what congenital heart defects do and impact with your body. Myth number five, congenital heart defects are cured after surgery. No, no, congenital heart defects actually unfortunately have no known cure. 
Um, hopefully, maybe one day we will find one. Even if you have a surgery in which you're labeled repaired or fixed or corrected, it's not fixed. Think about it. Somebody cut into your heart that has the potential to cause lifelong issues down the road. A lot of people believe that once you have surgery, you're fixed, which again, you're not. Many others believe that a heart transplant is a cure to congenital heart disease, whereas really this would just be swapping one diagnosis for another. Myth number six is that congenital heart defects are a childhood illness, so they only impact kids. That's also incorrect. I'm 24 years old. I'm not a child here anymore. I am an adult. I will have my congenital heart defects and my Fontan circulation for my entire life. Going along with that, for fact number seven, there are actually more adults now living with congenital heart defects than there are children. This is due to recent medical advancements over the past few decades. Adults weren't surviving into adulthood with congenital heart defects just 20, 25 years ago, and now look where we're at. Another myth related to that, number seven here, is that you must see a pediatric cardiologist for your lifetime. This is incorrect. It's, it's a very common misconception. It's very important for an adult to transition over to adult congenital care, not a general cardiologist who sees adults with acquired heart disease, however, a specialized adult congenital cardiologist. This is so important because there are, are issues that we can face in adulthood that we would face regardless of our congenital heart disease that a pediatric cardiologist wouldn't really be the most appropriate to seek treatment with. I think this is the one I feel most strongly about those. So if you're speaking to somebody whose child is nearing adulthood, or if your friend is an adult still being seen primarily at a children's hospital, please share this along with them. Let them know how important it is for every CHD year to be seen by an adult congenital heart disease specialist at least once in their lifetime. Fact number eight, the most common form of a congenital heart defect is known as a ventricular septal defect. That was actually one of the ones I was born with. A ventricular septal defect is a hole in between the two bottom chambers of the heart. This Myth number eight, you can't exercise or play sports if you have CHD, but this is not true. Depending on your cardiac status and at the approval of your cardiologist, um, many CHDers can exercise. Playing sports, specifically contact sports, may be a little trickier, but there are Olympians with congenital heart defects. Sean White, for instance, I believe he snowboards, and he has Tetralogy of Fallot. Fact number nine, there are over 40 congenital heart defects existing, and many of them occur in combinations, like myself. I was born with six complex congenital heart defects. The combination of the defects I was born with greatly changed the surgeries that I had. Myth number nine, all congenital heart defect patients will require a heart transplant. We kind of touched on this earlier. Not all congenital heart defect patients will require a heart transplant. Some certainly do, some sooner than others, but not all CHD patients require a heart transplant. Myth number 10, every CHD -er requires antibiotics before going to the dentist. So this is incorrect. For those of you that don't know, this is for endocarditis prophylaxis, really. Um, because if there are any cuts in the gums during dental work, that can allow bacteria to get into the bloodstream, to go to the heart, and the whole nine yards. The guidelines were recently changed, really actually lessen the amount of people that require antibiotics before going to the dentist. Now, just an example of somebody who may require antibiotics before going to the dentist would be somebody with a valve replacement. Fact number 10, I wanted to share some warning signs of congenital heart defects. They can go undiagnosed, so it's important to know what to look out for. Um, some things that you want to look out for would be poor weight gain, cyanosis, meaning you're blue, or other discolorations such as ruddiness or something like that, a heart murmur, fast breathing, poor feeding, excessive sweating. So those are all things to look out for um, if you're concerned for a congenital heart defect. Thank you all again for joining me to celebrate Heart Week. I hope I was able to allow you to learn a little bit more about congenital heart defects and why it's so important to advocate for increased funding, increased research, and really increased awareness about the number one birth defect. 
I will see you all next time. Have a great heart week and remember spread the word about CHD.